Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Batman and Robin from 1997. Batman and Robin is universally called the worst Batman movie ever made. Pretty much nobody likes it. An excessively budgeted bomb of a film. It didn't really bomb, but it didn't really succeed. It kind of just made its money back, but that's about it. It was the death nail in the Tim Burton, Joel Schumacher, Batman franchise. And yes, it really is as bad as everyone remembers. It's very much a sign of the excessive 90s and everything that was horrible and annoying about that. This movie I've always thought was awful. I thought it was awful before it even came out. I think most people saw this stinker coming and were almost ready for it and then just come out of the water and we all stood around and watched it die so we could move on with our summer movie going season in 1997. This is a film made by marketing executives executives and studio executives and all of the 90s buzzwords at the time trying to appeal to everyone and thus pretty much no one but all its excessive 90s-ness this movie is really a film produced by Poochie the dog from the Simpsons he's radical he's in your face he appeals to basically what people like now it's trying to be so current by the time it's released it feels outdated and that is Batman and Robin it's hard to get through it has too many things going on on. I mean literally you have well first you have Batman and Robin and then you have Batgirl and then you have Alfred these people all have storylines by the way then you have Mr. Freeze who has a storyline then you have Poison Ivy right then you also have Bane so that's seven storylines you ever wonder like in an X-Men movie why do they focus just on Wolverine and like a couple other people because storytelling wise it would have way too much going on and Batman and Robin has an excessive amount of things going on it's already a sequel to a movie that had too many villains in it and too many things going on in it already but they decided hey let's go even further with that let's take everything about the 1995 Batman forever and make it even worse even brighter and more colorful and make an even more excessive sequel to an already excessive lighter kid Batman movie and it really turns out to be one of the worst excessive 90s boardroom studio summer blockbusters that ever came out. Batman and Robin at first fighting Mr. Freeze because he's just attacking things they kind of just introduced him at the beginning with Jim Gordon telling you all the exposition you need to know and then they're fighting Mr. Freeze then Poison Ivy gets involved somehow and Bane in a really horrible interpretation of that character and then Batgirl shows up because she is Alfred's niece and Alfred is sick and so she is there to help Alfred but then she's taking a motorcycle and Batman and Robin are both in love with Poison Ivy and Robin and Batman don't like each other in this which I've never remember that happening in the comics but whatever it really didn't work but fine and so then Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze team up and are gonna both freeze the earth and bring back Mother Nature and they have to stop them and Batgirl shows up eventually. I have really disliked this movie for a very long time and when it originally came out I remember a friend of mine and I going to the movie theaters to actually make fun of it because we knew it was going to suck and I wanted to make fun of it like Mystery Science Theater and I don't remember anything I said no one was in the theater and my friend kept poking me to shut up because there's like a couple people but they were also really far way so I don't think I ruined the experience although I think Batman and Robin the movie ruined the experience. It was horrible. Everyone who was into comics at the time knew Batman and Robin was going to be horrendous. It was pretty obvious everything that you hated about Batman forever this movie was going to do the same but even worse. Everyone saw this ginormous disaster coming. It seemed like pretty self-aware that this was going to be a horrible movie. I've really never seen a big budget film where so many people were like this is going to suck and the mainstream press was like well people love Batman so they'll put up with it and no one no one did nobody liked this movie and it's hard to get through this is kind of how I knew Joel Schumacher initially I know people have tried to claim he's not the worst director ever and you know he's not just a studio yes man but then I watch I don't know both his Batman movies and I kind of disagree I think he is a studio yes man and Batman and Robin is one of the biggest studio yes man movies that's ever been made I think the interesting thing this Batman series is known for its two directors Tim Burton doing the first two and Joel Schumacher doing the second two whereas the Tim Burton movies you very much feel that they're Tim Burton films you get the auteurism of Tim Burton throughout those films Batman Returns almost got a little too into that it's a little too excessively
actually a Tim Burton movie. It almost feels like Batman Forever and Batman Robin are almost like Warner Brothers trying to make up for what happened with Returns, which they really didn't like. And seeing what Joel Schumacher did was the opposite, where you had a director who would really stand up for his vision like Tim Burton and have this dark, more serious Batman and showing a comic book hero in a more serious, mature way. Joel Schumacher wanted to do more like the Adam West Batman and the Dick Sprang era of Batman. Yes, that's a real name. But it's almost the problem that even the Superman series had, where you have a director like Richard Donner who's taking Superman seriously and has faith in the character and believes in the mythology of the character, and then the producers are against it. And same with the people at Warner Brothers were very much against doing more of serious Batman. They wanted to do this sillier, more fun, more marketable Batman. Batman Returns had a hard time selling toys. Although I remember a lot of people buying the Batman Returns toys, but whatever. But then when you get to Batman and Robin, they let Kenner help design the stuff in the film. They very much wanted this to be about the merchandise. Now certainly that's why you do a superhero thing. It's not just because of their box office growth, it's because of all the other markets that come with it. And Batman and Robin certainly suffered from that more than I've seen any other movie. And you look at all the things going on with it and almost like they didn't really know what they were doing. They just picked everything that was popular out of a hat. That's why I think of Poochie because Poochie is not done creatively. Poochie was a character who was done for marketing reasons to keep Ishii and Scratchy hip. And in a way it's like it felt like they were trying to keep Batman hip. Almost do what James Bond movies do where they take in everything that was popular between the last James Bond movie. But Batman and Robin didn't pick one thing like Star Wars or black exploitation, like with Moonraker and Live and Let Die. They instead just picked everything. They made this more of a fun kids movie. They got Alicia Silverstone involved. They have a soundtrack music from and inspired by soundtrack which I believe was the first soundtrack to do that or it's the first one I remember doing that. I liked inspired by like what a bullshit. They make these soundtracks with all these different artists on it but you never hear any of the music in the actual movie except for the end credits. Although I really like the Smashing Pumpkins song the end is the beginning is the end especially at the time. That was really the only thing I liked about it and even the Bone Thugs and Harmony song Look Into My Eyes. 97 was like a confusing time. There are all these different genres coexisting at once. You didn't have a dominant genre or a dominant form of music really or a dominant anything involving youth culture. You didn't have a dominant thing within it. You'd have that in a couple years. But 97 it, it just felt like a mishmash of ideas and, and things that were semi-popular and they put all of that into Batman and Robin. You get this day glow colors that they have throughout all this film. The lighting doesn't seem to be as dark. Even Batman Forever was darker than this movie. Batman Forever, the interesting thing is there were no complaints about being too dark, but they seemed to lighten it up just so you could see the characters better, which really doesn't work for this. Batman and Robin's in this weird place where a lot of people condemn it for kind of ruining the superhero movie genre for a couple years and studios losing faith in the superhero movie genre, except for the fact that Blade came out like pretty close to this movie and then X-Men came out three years later. It seems like they didn't want to do the very comic booky designs of characters anymore the way Batman and Robin certainly does and then Marvel Studios definitely brought to the forefront again but they certainly didn't do it well and I don't think doing that kind of a character design at that time would have really worked for movies then. I think that was more the movies and popular culture and what was going on. You couldn't have a yellow spandex Wolverine in the first X-Men. It just honestly wasn't going to work in the post Matrix era. So when people say that stuff it's just like I kind of get it certainly killed that Superman Tim Burton movie and they probably delayed a few superhero movies but it didn't like really put a wrench in the machine the way people want to act like it did it certainly changed the course of the batman franchise they were going to do another one two years after this called batman triumphant they really certainly started to churn them out as soon as the studio liked the direction of them they really wanted a very marketable movie that was going to make them a lot of money but they didn't think about the movie itself it was trying to do this whole like goofy batman thing that's i think one of the biggest things about this movie is that it wasn't taking comic books very seriously but it was kind of in this weird era where the people who did take comic books seriously didn't have as much of a disposable income yet. So you still had the baby boomers interpretation of superheroes, which was very much Adam West Batman series and the kind of the sillier Batman comics from the pre Marvel age of comic books. And so that idea seems to have come back because most of what would happen with the Marvel movies that would come later was really the people who were buying the tickets from that were the kids and teenagers who were buying comic books in the comic book boom. And those people didn't really have have much to say at the studio executive tables when a comic book movie in 1997 would come out. And so I think this is one of the last gasps of people going like, comic books are silly and stupid, let's make it silly and like a comic book kind of feel. Ugh. And they didn't really think about translating it to the screen. There's often times where it does feel like dialogue from 
from a comic book from an old like 50s Batman comic or something particularly the part of uh, Commissioner Gordon talking to Batman in the car but then when you're watching it it feels very wooden and stiff and very wordy it feels like too much and in an old comic book sure that works because of the flow of it but in a movie it really doesn't and then that it has this serious thing with Alfred I don't know why it has Alfred have an arc in it none of these arcs really connect to one another which makes it even more bizarre and also I think the villains aren't very captivating every other Batman movie you have whether you like the villains or not you have to admit they have a star presence about them whether it's Jack Nicholson as the Joker Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman Danny DeVito as Penguin Jim Carrey as the Riddler but Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze just really he's not that interesting he's fun to laugh at and all the terrible ice puns that are littered throughout this movie for some reason he's not really captivating in a villain role and that they're trying to use the animated series version of Mr. Freeze in this movie it felt like like why are you bringing the Batman the animated series influence into this for seemingly no reason and also why even have Bane why not have a henchman just feels like they're like well people really like Bane now you didn't really use Bane you used a henchman put Bane's mask on it it was a really horrible use of the character and I'd hate to see a Batman movie where Bane's basically reduced to a henchman they never really do the real character of Bane who isn't even a white guy like they never even get the right ethnicity with Bane and they never really treat him the way he should be he's actually a really important intelligent cool character and they've never really done him justice even now the whole thing with the Alfred Batman relationship that's going on in this movie it's interesting and it's something Christopher Nolan frankly did a lot better than this horrible movie did it's odd that this film gets so dark and dramatic in some of those scenes you can see Clooney can be a good Bruce Wayne it's just he's not a very good Batman he almost doesn't distinguish the different personas almost Christian Bale Michael Keaton they really got that they understood that they're kind of different personas and Clooney just didn't really get that at all there's just so many things wrong with this movie and so many things going on it's such a mess of everything and it reminds me of what I really didn't like about the 90s it's everything I hated even at the time that I was existing in the 90s even literally a year later this film would be dated and when you're making things that are mainly about selling them toys and selling them soundtracks and everything like that that's an excessive fun sugary time but people aren't going to connect with that and that's my biggest problem with 90s big blockbusters is they feel very empty as much as I'll complain about directors now who do blockbusters, it's at least the studio understands that like, hey, if we're going to make 17 of these fucking things, you probably kind of have to like at least 15 of them. So they actually kind of try. I know they're selling you toys and McDonald's stuff still now. At least they're being smarter about it, making a much more entertaining movie. And Batman and Robin wasn't that kind of Hollywood. I never really loved the 90s, even when I was in it. But this reminds me of Poochie and the whole extreme 90s. It's all the worst things about the 90s that if you look lived in the 90s you would really hate but this was all the bad CG of the time the bad screenwriting and frankly just directed by a Hollywood yes man Joel Schumacher may have made it up in other ways with other films that I honestly didn't see because he just rubbed me the wrong way with ruining probably one of the greatest characters of the 20th century and just doing whatever the studio wanted while yelling over a megaphone while he directed remember this is a cartoon while also realizing he doesn't really have any respect for cartoons or comic books or anything like that he thumbed his nose at it and you can tell that the whole time if you ever think like hey why did Joel Schumacher's Batman movies suck it's because he has no respect at all for the characters he was doing he always acted like yeah he could have made a darker Batman movie and you know if you watch some of his stuff before the Batman films it feels like he probably could but looking at the evidence of two movies I don't think he really could everything I've read about him being on set and what he just let the studio bulldoze over him and make their ridiculous like Kmart merchandise friendly movie and just make it even goofier and sillier because that's really what he thought of Batman and he just kept that kind of negative stereotype of superheroes and is why it took so long to have a really good superhero movie it really took forever to have directors who took superheroes seriously and took the genre genre seriously into what we have now and Joel Schumacher was one of those directors who was hurting the genre and really his whole thing he could have done this he could have done that well shoulda coulda woulda but you made a shitty Batman movie and ruined a perfectly cool franchise because you wanted to make a bunch of money for your studio friends and with that kind of respect I'm not going to ever respect this movie and I'll probably never respect Joel Schumacher because he's a piece of shit for making a movie that was a true piece of shit this is an awful horrible movie it's 
it's hard to stay awake during and it's also just amazing to just witness how stupid and horrendous it is and really it starts off with an Iceman cometh joke it's all downhill from there and a downhill spiral to show you how awful and terrible the 90s are if you're ever nostalgic from the 90s sit through this and you'll be praying to God that it was all over just like I was so hopefully the 2000s would come crashing into the building that was the 90s so all the 90s could come tumbling down and I wouldn't have to think about the 90s ever again and we could frankly move on and get out of that dust cloud so if you have seen batman and robin and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to